Now let's go ahead and jump into how to use Isotope Neutron 4 in order to shape an 808. So before any processing, everything sounds like this. So a very simple 808, nice and clean sounding, has a lot of nice extended low end, but with some effects processing. So what we're doing here is using Isotope Neutron as a multiband shaper for this 808. We're gonna apply some distortion and compression effects, and then this will allow us to really shape the 808 into exactly what we want for our production. This is super fun too, because you can actually use this on any 808 sound. Here I just have something super clean, so that way we can just process it exactly how we want. But you can take any sample you'd like and apply these types of effects that I'll show you how to do in this video. So the first thing that we'll do is go ahead and remove Isotope, and then I'm gonna go ahead and search Neutron. And we're going to go ahead and pull that up over here. And we'll drag and drop that onto our 808. Also resize that just a little bit so it's a little bit larger. Make it a bit easier to see everything. Also solo out the 808, make sure everything is looped, and we're ready to start working on our sound. So the first thing I want to do is play around with multiband distortion. We'll use the harmonic exciter for this. Let me go ahead and cue that up. We'll cue up the exciter. I'll remove that EQ for now because we don't need it. And then we can go ahead and start playing around with it. So I want to have a low end frequency band that's focused on those nice and subby lows. So that way we could retain all that nice low end information and then we could really distort the upper high frequencies. This will enable us to have a nice low end that the super tight and sounds nice on some subs. But then we can go really crazy with the distortion on the top end. And that'll just give us a lot of options for playing around with the tone of our 808. Let's also create a high frequency band so that way we can really distort the top end if we want. And then we kind of have to choose some values here, kind of where we want to split everything. Let's choose this first one. I'm going to go ahead and solo out those lows. I think that's nice there, maybe a little bit higher. That way I'm grabbing all that nice resonance and low end that'll sound really good on a sub. And we're not really going to apply any processing to that low end. Then from there, let's choose the top end frequencies. We're trying to grab the click and all that top end information on the 808. And by itself, it's really quiet right now, but we'll apply a little bit of distortion there uh, here in a moment. Maybe do everything above like 6K or so. And then we can start playing around with those bands to really shape our sound. So those values are 200 and 6K, if you're following along. So on that main low-end band, we don't want to apply any processing because we want that sub to be nice and full. If we start distorting this, then it sort of becomes really floppy sounding, and we'll lose that really intense low-end sub-frequency inside of our 808. So we're going to leave that as is, but we, then we can jump over to the next band, and this is where we'll begin actually distorting everything. So on those mid-frequencies, first we need to choose a style of distortion. Here I'm going to go ahead and use tape. So I can drag that over to there, and then I'm going to go ahead and increase this. Let me also turn off those tool tips as well as we're working on everything. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to choose the tape distortion because I want that nice sort of tape saturation effect. I'm going to go ahead and just crank this all the way up. We'll solo this out. And then we can always play around with the distortion depending on the type of style we're going for. But I think for this, I kind of want like a really nice knock on my 808. The tube is a little bit more full and rich sounding, so it's just different styles of distortion. You can also blend between them as well by dragging around this icon over here. But in this case, I want that nice sort of knock distortion. And by itself, just doing that one band actually sounds really nice. And you can hear all that nice low end is intact. We still have that nice sub and all this nice distortion on top, but we still retain all of our nice low end sub frequencies. Now let's go ahead and hop over to the high frequency band. We'll click over to here. I'll make sure that is soloed. And by itself, it's really quiet right now. But there's that little kick transient that you can hear if you listen in the background. So I want to go ahead and accentuate that. So let's pull down. So let's go ahead and crank the distortion. So now it's a little bit more apparent. We can hear it. And let's play around with these different distortion types to see what we want to use for our distortion here. So I think the warm is the most subtle. It just gives us that little click. It's almost like an attack transient. Very subtle, but it sounds quite nice. And then all together with that harmonic exciter, it sounds like this. That's a really great starting point for the 808. From here, let's go ahead and further shape our sound. 
So the first thing that we're going to do to kind of expedite this process a little bit is we're going to use the Sculptor module. So we can go ahead and select that. And what this does is it provides several different effects. It provides some EQ shaping, some distortion, tonal shaping, and also some different compression settings as well. It's almost similar in a way to the Sooth 2 plugin if you've ever used that plugin inside your DAW. But basically this will enable us to quickly shape sounds and it can be quite fun to apply different types of shaping to sounds that they weren't meant to have. So here I want to use the dialog mode. So we're going to go over to dialog and this is normally used to shape dialog. But this will apply kind of an interesting effect to our audio. This is what this sounds like. So you can see there's this dynamically adapting EQ curve. And the speed kind of controls almost the response time of that curve. We'll go ahead and leave that as is. Let me go ahead and put the tone down and see what that does. It kind of darkens everything. And don't worry about that clipping for now. We'll go ahead and dress out with some limiting a little bit later. So this sounds super nice on the top end. It's kind of providing a bit of clarity and also a little bit of like compression almost because it's dynamically adapting to those frequencies. But we want to make sure that our low end is intact because right now this is affecting the low end. We want to make sure that that is nice and full sounding. So what we can do is set how this is focused on our signal. I can go ahead and click over here on the left hand side and drag this. Then everything below this value is not going to be affected. So I'll put that at about where we had that harmonic exciter split. So we'll start at 200, maybe go slightly up from there. I think I like where that's sitting. So what it's really doing is focusing those mid-range frequencies and providing a nice clarity for the A to weight, especially because the sound is quite boomy. Then that's all for the Sculptor module. Now we can play around with some equalization settings to really kind of further sculpt our sound. I find the Sculptor module is a really great first step, and then from there you can clean everything up with EQ as needed. Because it's all dynamically adapting to everything, that sounds quite natural. So you could do some really nice tonal shaping before you have to worry about EQing anything inside your sounds. So the first thing I want to do here is kind of increase some of those mid-range resonances. If we listen to the 808, that low end sounds nice and balanced, but there's definitely some mids that could be pushed out. So let's go ahead and grab those with a nice bell curve here. Let's make that nice and wide. This is really more about general tonal shaping, so the exact values don't have to be precise. What we're looking for is more general color and tone on my 808. But if you're curious what that value is on that Q, uh, it's going to be 0.5. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a frequency probably about in this kind of range here. Try to grab that knock and resonance of the 808. Maybe widen that up a little bit. So now you could really hear the clicky attack of that 808. And there's a lot more of that like kick sound, especially if this is used as the main bass, like what we have in this example. There's not a kick in here, it's just the 808. Adding in that little snap there in the mid frequencies really provides a nice punch. That is at 1,233 with 4.7 decibels of gain. And the Q, I went ahead and widened it up just a little bit, is at 0.4. Another thing that you could do to kind of add a little bit of clarity so things don't get too muddy, especially when you're creating big boosts like this, is to go ahead and cut some lower mid frequencies right underneath that. Let's go ahead and grab this value right here. Solve this out so we can kind of hear what it's doing. And then we could find where those sort of rumbly mid frequencies are. Then we could dial those back just to add a little bit of clarity. Let's also widen that cue up just a little bit. So that stuff is kind of just getting in the way of our main sound. That's a 433. So that's just adding a little bit of clarity. And then we could also add maybe just a little bit of top end. Narrow up that cue shelf here. We're just trying to bring out some of that sort of snappiness on the top. This is really about adding that little bit of clarity and pushing those mids. Then to kind of press all these different elements all together to make it all feel a bit more integrated, let's go ahead and add in some multiband compression. So we will queue up the compressor. We're almost going to kind of use this more as like a transient shaper. 
especially because we really want a nice snap in the low end. It's snap in the higher up frequencies. We're really going to kind of focus our efforts on making this snap because this is more of a kick drum sound. So let's figure out where we want that low end frequency cut to be. Probably increase that just a little bit. Let's see, what do we do on the scope through here? Let's do 228. I think that, that would work well. Try to keep some consistency between the two different bands. This is all lows. And then we have the highs and mids. So let's go ahead and begin by compressing those lows. And I have this set to the punch setting, which almost works more like a transient shaper. So you see the interface is a little bit different than these other compressor interfaces. Punch acts more as a transient shaper for your material. So turn off the auto mode as well on both of those, just so we don't auto gain match everything. And I'm really looking to add a nice snap. So let's go ahead and increase this. So you can see it's adding in this nice like sustain to it and I give it a snap. Obviously that's too extreme, so let's back off. I like where that's sitting. Now let's hop over to the other frequency band. So you can hear and see on that visual interface that it's adding quite a bit of snap. Obviously that's too intense. Now let's listen to what they sound like together. We get a ton more snap on that kick drum. It just sounds a whole bunch more natural, especially because this is that main kick element. It just sounds tons more snappy and now has a nice kick drum sound to it. So this module is really great for shaping your 808s. You can also do this on kick drums, your bass lines, and things like that too. But I find on 808s, especially using the multi-band punch mode of the compressor, is super nice. Then we want to go ahead and address this clipping, because obviously we don't want our 808 to clip. So let's go ahead and turn on that limiter. And we're going to go ahead and set this to smooth. That way it's nice and smooth sounding. These are different limiter modes here, by the way. And then for the mode, I'm going to go ahead and set that to IRCLL just going to be one of the more advanced limiting modes. If you've ever used the Isotope Mastering software Ozone, then you may be familiar with some of these different limiter modes. These are all carryovers from that device, and that'll just provide a nice limiting so that way we're not clipping, but we still have that energy on our 808. Then we can go ahead and leave that limiter up here at the top just because we don't want anything to go over zero. That's just adding some limiting so that way we're not clipping, but we could still get that intensity. The last thing I want to do is add just a touch of width. Obviously, because this is a sub sound, we don't want to go too crazy with this. By the way, if this is all the way up, this is what it sound like. So it's going to add tons of width. We just want to add just a little bit, just so it has a bit more flavor. We don't want to go too crazy with it. So we'll do like seven. That's all for how to shape 808s using Isotope Neutron. There's a lot of different options here and you have lots of cool customizations that you can do with this plugin, especially once you start breaking everything into multiband splits and distorting them and compressing them. You have a lot of control over exactly how your 808's gonna hit. And that could be really helpful in a production when you're mixing something, especially if it's for a client, because you have a lot of control over exactly how that 808's gonna hit. So you can really integrate it into the mix. So thanks for checking out this video. I'll see you in the next one.